Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to the weekly wrap up. Another week. And this time last week, we were celebrating all time highs for Bitcoin. We were. We've had another one during the week. So, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah it's I'm been... pretty sure we did since the Monday. So, it went a little bit higher. I still think we could get there. But, you know, we're coming up yeah. to a um, lunar eclipse. So, Bitcoin likes to pull back on lunar eclipses. Uh, we also have some drama in the UK. So um, obviously, like when we get major events, sometimes that can cause markets to crash, um, especially when they're to do with the royals in the UK. That can have ripple effects uh, throughout the uh, the markets um, and, yeah, causing it to pull back. I don't know. I think that's all hype still. I think it's all hype, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, that lunar eclipse is happening. I think it's about seven days now, which almost scarily aligns with your chart in terms of what you think could be a pullback. I don't know. Do you want to go into yeah, that? Yeah, it, it really does. So, you know, there potentially is a pullback coming. So whether we're in that now or it's within the next seven days, um, I do think before halving that we can – you know, once we have this pullback, then we can have like quite a, a major sort of, you know, move upwards, um, completing that pattern, then allowing another pullback uh, to go into the bull run next year. So, um, you know, there's there's another. So if we're, if we're looking at uh, lunar eclipses and blood moons, we know that we had uh, one here and one here. Um, we had one at the high. Um, at here and one way back in 2014, so which uh, took Bitcoin down from $1,000 down to, you know, I think about 200 or something. Um, but, yeah, so it does have an effect on the market. It's like maybe it's a coincidence, maybe it's not, maybe that's why we do go to the moon. So um, just be extra cautious um, know how you're trading. If you're a short-term trader, be aware of the leverage. Uh, don't over leverage in this region because you're going to get liquidated because I know there's going to be some really sharp moves coming up, whether that's, you know, up, down or um, sort of we don't know which way. And, and maybe it could go both ways to wipe out uh, both shorts and longs. Um, but we do have a, a support around that 50K mark. You know, and that, that does make this look like that could potentially be a fourth wave. So um, once we get some overall direction, we'll know more. Uh, we don't have any direction as yet. We're kind of trending sideways. Um, you know, we're hitting sort of that 70K coming back down. Um, and, yeah, so it's, you know, it's kind of in limbo land and I think I've just frozen. No, I'm back. <laughs> so, um, you know, we need those tether prints. We need that to happen. We've seen a lot of exchanges selling off a lot of uh, BTC over the last week. Um, it is that time of the market where we've hit uh, the region where the miners will sell. So that could be factoring in as well. Uh, when we're looking at the long-term sort of market projection, you really want to be buying these dips, even if you're uh, dollar cost averaging into BTC um, at the moment and, you know, you've taken some profit in this region and you're dollar cost averaging back in to BTC as the dips occur. Um, that's a really good strategy for the long term. And um, I think it's going to be sort of a positive thing, you know, because we don't know exactly where it's going to fall. I don't think we're getting that 12K that uh, Capo and a, a few of the mega bears on uh, X are saying at the moment. I'm seeing those charts come back out because, you know, there's been a little bit of red. Um, yeah, so immediate sort of immediate future, you know, if we can sort of get above 10% in this region, there's a, a bullish pivot sitting just above where we are at the moment. So that bullish pivot is sitting at 68, sort of 787, depending on exchange. This is a bit for next chart. Um, if we can break that, the next pivot after that is uh, 72468. 
which we have a really strong chance of getting to if this region that we're in now does break through. So um, one step at a time for BTC at the moment, just so we can get a gauge on overall direction, we are holding this channel. Um, and it does. It looks to me like we're missing a wave. So there's not enough waves in this pattern. So whether that's something uh, that happens over the next little bit, um, but yeah, something to be aware of. We do have that uh, lunar eclipse coming up or solar eclipse. I'm not sure which one it is, but it's around the 24th or 25th of March, depending on where you are in the world, mainly seen in the USA. Um, and yeah, that normally does have some sort of weird effect on Bitcoin. So I don't know if it's the traders go a bit weird um, or they just think the sky is falling. But uh, another thing is to watch what's happening in the UK with the Royals and uh, that could have an effect on UK markets. So uh, something to watch. Mm, OK, so if Bitcoin is potentially going to be choppy. What does that mean for, I guess, Ethereum and the alts? Is it a time to just be sitting on your hands and DCAing or do you think that the Ethereum and alts could, could provide some good trades? We've had such a huge run on these. Like, I do think we're still going to get some trades. I think it's not done. You know, wherever we are, we can sort of buy FIB levels as it's pulling back um, and and sort of wait for those bounces. Uh, it's a good time at this present time, if you're not in, if these are not long term trades, to be uh, just scalping some trades. Um, not necessarily with leverage because alts will move sort of 10 to 20% and you don't need leverage from that. You know, um, when you're sort of looking at that, you're getting kind of greedy in this region because it's a higher risk area where, you know, you if you don't know what you're doing and you don't know how um, how much leverage you're using, you're going to get, you're going to wipe out your balance. So just be ultra cautious with that. Um, if you must leverage, you know, two, three times, but this region's like particularly um, going to be a bit savage. Just I think we're going to get a little bit of volatility over the next week or two. So uh, just be aware of that. So um, just looking at this chart again. So if I pull this back to the weekly, I just want to show you um, one thing that I have noticed is um, when we have had these periods of sideways, um, we did get uh, sort of a, a little bit of a pullback in that region. Um, every time we've had uh, sort of like, um, you know, this, this spinning top, we have continued up. So, um, you know, whether this is a larger retrace or a smaller retrace, I don't, I think we're missing a wave. Um, I literally think this is a fourth wave of this third wave pattern. So um, if we're looking at that, um, we're going to be just looking at this immediate wave to get some measurements from it. And, um, you know, the 0.5 sort of region is around the 62, 63 mark. So that's, that's a possibility. Um, but because the market has been so overly bullish at the moment, it may just hold in this region here. So... Um, we are sort of getting toppy on a lot of indicators. They can go sideways. As we've seen in a lot of bull markets, a lot of the daily to sort of weekly indicators will just trend sideways on the top with minor pullbacks. So that's something to be aware of if you are um, trading off the indicators. They don't always give you an accurate uh, sort of reading in these regions because once we get to... Um, these upper regions, you can see that they they just sort of trend sideways. So we had this sideways movement here and, you know, the indicator, this is a stock RSI, just really sort of moved. I'm going to bring that up so we can have a look. Oh, I disappeared it. Hang on. That one. So um, we can see that we do have sort of, you know, when we've had pullbacks on BTC, they have been kind of minor until we have those really larger pullbacks. So this region, we might just see just a small pullback on the, um, the RSI and the stock RSI, which is going to sort of, you know, allow that momentum to continue. 
So, um, you know, a lot of patterns are looking like they still have one wave to go. Um, and whether that uh, happens like before halving or after halving, it would be ideal to just see this as a minor pullback, um, a continuation to that upper resistance. And that's when we get that larger pullback at uh, just be before halving. So a bit of a tongue twister there. So we've still got, um, I think, about uh, 40 days, depending on what sort of um, one you look at. Um, every every sort of halving calculator I've looked at today has a, a difference, and uh, 40 days is kind of in the middle. Um, so that, that's kind of what we're looking at. So I think we've got a little bit of pain happening for BTC. We're going to see um, some shakeouts this week. But I don't think this is the massive pullback that we are getting yet. I think that is reserved for just before halving. Okay, fantastic. Um, well, uh, it's probably a good time to say hello to everyone. Of course, we have Getting Started in Crypto, our group here, um, but also live on YouTube and X. Um, I know you said if we got to maybe 200 viewers, um, we'd keep it open for a few walk charts. And we're currently yeah, let's do that again. So that was yeah. um, awesome last week to see everyone and um, to get some requests in. So uh, both okay. through X, through YouTube, um, and Dude, yeah, just say comment. hi. So we've got a few uh, of our yeah, members with us, which is really cool. Yeah, I mean, we have like about 315 uh with us right now so um lots of uh faces with us like lisa says drop a chart request or a question in to the youtube comment x comments they should all appear on my screen and of course gsic uh if you've been filling out that form i've got them coming through so we will get through as many as we can did you want to jump into all coins now, Lise, or do you want? I'm going to jump straight into Ethereum because um, okay. you know that's a sort of a, you know on everyone's lips at the moment. Like, what's happening? Is it going to be an ETF? Uh, where are we going with that pattern? Um, we can see potentially this is a, a 12 hour chart. So if I pull that up to a daily, we can get a better indication of where this could go. We haven't, like I was explaining last week, um, the charts always come back and they meet the 100 and the 200 um, weekly average. So on the moving average on the MAs. So that hasn't happened for a little bit. The um, 9 and 21 are quite strong indicators to know whether we're in an uptrend or these are EMAs or a downtrend, they're kind of bending down. I don't think we're going down yet. I don't think we've quite finished. I think this is a game um, similar to what we're seeing on BTC, potentially a fourth wave. So, um, and I, I really would like to see these resistance regions uh, tested. So when we uh, do pull this back to see where we get that resistance from, if it wants to open up, um, we can see that, uh, you know, all of these waves have come back and, and tested that and then it's broken down. We haven't actually tested this uh, region as yet. We're so close, um, but it's an untested resistance. So we want to sort of tap that three or four times before we do have a continuation up. So ideally for Ethereum, even though we've pulled back, it would be nice to see something like this tapping up onto that um, that resistance in that region and kind of forming a triangle or a, or a uh, channel at that point and then that continuation up. So that's the ideal scenario for Ethereum. Obviously, we can pull back uh, a lot deeper. Uh, the thing that sort of tells me we're possibly not pulling back um, at that point is the stock RSI. Every time on the daily we have got to this point, we have bounced. We have had quite a good bounce. So um, the daily stock is a really good indicator for, you know, understanding where we are. So we can see at this point we've, we've had a downtrend uh, and that's like a major bounce point on this stock RSI. We are there again. So whether we have a, a small bounce and we come back and retest, 
But every time we've been on that bottom line on the stock, we have bounced. So if you are short, just be aware that there is potentially a bounce coming, whether that's this week, whether it's later in the week, it's coming. So um, these indicators are showing that it is there and that it is about to happen. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see sort of how that works, whether it's going to follow BTC with that fourth wave pattern and uh, a bit of a sideways sort of momentum at the moment. ETH hasn't reached its all time high. So that is a potential to happen. It normally runs after Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin sort of quietens down, ETH might have a quick correction here and uh, take off and hit that all time high. So just be aware of that. There could be those ETFs coming through and um, yeah, it's definitely something that you wanna be all of these pullbacks for your long-term bags, you want to be uh, buying the dips or, and, you know, dca in. Okay, excellent. Uh, we've got a few requests coming through from YouTube and X, but have you got, I think you've got a couple lined up. Did you want to jump into a couple of those before we go? Yeah, there? so uh, I've got YGG for one of our members, Sadie. So uh, this is one of our signals. It's uh, quite a big target. So uh, YGG is Yield Guild Games, um, and they've been pro quite proactive during the bear market, sort of building and, and moving on with that. Um, we are seeing a minor pullback. It may go as low um, as the, the 200, which is about 68. So anywhere, but ideally, this is a four-hour chart, and we are coming back and we're getting across here. So it does look like we're going to get a bounce. Um, you know, this is a, a nice wedge pattern. It is forming nicely. So if we can get outside of that wedge, um, you know, definitely it's going to come up and hit that 91. It may have one more wave down. That brings us to the 200 and then it's going to take off. So it still might be in a little bit of a correction, um, which gives us an A, a B, and potentially a C and a D, a tighter sort of pattern there. So if I get those A, B, C, D, so we've got a, a long C wave, a B, and potentially that could be like a, a very choppy C wave or it could be a very tight D and E wave. So um, that's potentially, and that um, 200 MA is going to come across and meet that last wave. So um, rejection might happen at around 91 and then come back down. So that's it for YGG. Uh, Cotty, um, which has had a really nice pump as well. We are seeing um, a lot of these coins and tokens having fourth waves. So fourth waves are predominantly triangles. They're a complex wave structure for Elliott Wave. Um, and this is definitely forming um, a triangle here. We can see that we've got this pattern forming. If we pull this wave across from um, previous waves, we can get some support here. Um, so this was our previous resistance. It's now being tested as support. It may sort of just chop around in this region while Bitcoin does its thing. So just sort of like in here before heading higher. So that's what we're looking at for Cotty. Um, it's a good place to be accumulating for um, that. And I think these 100, the 100 and 200 MA are going to sweep up and um, support that region. Uh, we also have Matic. So Matic is one of these, I, I talked about this last week as well. So it's one of these charts that hasn't had these major breakouts, it hasn't reached you know, new highs, it's not breaking previous regions. So it is one that really needs to get moving. It needs, you know, a dot's another one at the moment. So they've got an airdrop happening, um, which you can check out, which is called dot is dead. Um, so that is happening uh, through the Nova wallet, I believe. So something to have a look at. Airdrops are really cool. Make sure you're being safe and secure when you get airdrops. Make sure you're using uh, wallets that are not attached to your main accounts so that, you know, if you are signing up to a dodgy one, they're not getting drained. 
Um, so, you know, lots of tips and tricks that you can find in the moonmag.com. But back to uh, what we're seeing on Matic, we do have um, a parallel channel in this region that uh, Matic has tried to break out of. It's coming back down. Currently, if we zoom in, we can see we're sitting right on that median line of that channel. We do have, this is a 12 hour chart. So we've got the 100 and the 200 MA as support in that region. Uh, we wanna see this kind of gain some momentum and move off. So potentially it's a very, very similar pattern to what Ethereum had when we uh, sort of look at what Ethereum had in that region. Let me just bring the ETH chart up. It's gonna be super slow. So when we go back to this region here where we had Ethereum sort of lagging behind uh, BTC and, um, you know, we had Ethereum sort of moving in a channel and just really, really lagging behind BTC. So it's a very, very similar thing happening on um, Matic at the moment. So you can see that we did have that channel. Um, it sort of came back down to that median line and then it's had that massive breakout. So if we assume that Matic is in that same pattern, Matic is just about to take off. So looking at that, um, potentially we've got maybe $2 coming up for Matic. Okay. Um, X or YouTube, take your pick, and I'll tell you what chart they want. All right, let's go X. X is XRP. XRP. Oh, don't have the chart open. Crazy. I think this is one of the most requested charts from everyone. So it is absolutely crazy that it's not open on my screen. Um, in the group, they're all asking all of the time. So XRP is another one that is really, 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 really lagging behind. Currently, we are turning around each and every time we have hit that pivot. So this pivot uh, basically takes it from bullish to bearish, um, and, and that's kind of what's happening for XRP. This is a daily chart, so, um, you know, that kind of looks very, very sideways. There's a lot of XRP in the, in the market, so it would need to be absolutely throttled and reduced for XRP to get those, you know, huge pumps that we did see in 2017. So um, I think it was 27, yeah, 2017, $3.30. Um, so that was XRP's all time high. What happened was the team stopped selling um, and, you know, that wasn't going into the market. So we want that to happen again for XRP to gain that traction. Um, so, yeah, so essentially this is our first wave. XRP is in a little bit of a correction. Does need to break that 7.4 mark for this to return to a bullish momentum and uh, then a continuation up. So ideally, short term, it can see 1.2 if it does that. Um, but until it does break that region, it is bearish. Okay, QNT is up next for Charlie on YouTube. So this is a nice one. So we had a signal on this um, and it, it went above that region. So let's just move that logo. We can see that this is forming a really nice cup. So we've seen this with, uh, you know, a lot of charts where they've, they've formed this cup and then they've absolutely taken off. So um, what that potentially looks like if we draw that. So we've got the cup forming here. We've got a little bit more. Um, and then we want to see that the handle and then uh, that chart absolutely take off. So how that would look once we get a confirmation app at that top region. Um, let me just move that up there. So that would be our entire cup coming back down. It could even be a shallow cup like a with a, a bit of a sort of a sideways handle, bit of a lean. 
and we're, we're coming down and making that handle at the moment. So that would just give us a little bit less in the cup. It's still very viable. Coming up um, and taking one of those. Uh, once this pattern is confirmed, it's looking at $199, $200. So um, this is what I mean. A lot of these patterns are still showing that they have one more wave left. Um, Bitcoin's still showing it potentially has one more wave left. Ethereum's still showing it has another wave left. Um, this is a corrective phase, and I think we're going to get another a round of, you know, exciting stuff before we do go into halving. So uh, just be aware if you are not on these, you know, obviously if they come back down past these regions, they're going to correct deeper. But um, currently a lot of the alts are holding the 200 and the 100 MA, and that's a really critical, like, region um, that they do need to hold because it, it just shows that there's a, a lot of buyer support um, and, you know, when they can sort of retest, retest, retest and then take off. Um, it's a really good sign of a strong coin. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, there, okay, good. Um, a lot of requests for sand coming through. Sand. So sand was another one that we've had. Uh, I think it hasn't reached that last target left, but it. Uh, I'm going to pull this up to the daily because it was one that you know I have been looking at. It's got a really, really beautiful um, inverse head and shoulders pattern. It's a bit crooked, so um, but it still looks really good. Uh, it's just coming back down to, you know, retest these regions and then potentially can head up. So um, I'm going to just throw some fibs on that and give you guys a little bit of an idea, sort of longer term, where we could be headed. Oops, if I don't take them all off, let me move that logo. So potentially uh, that's our wave one. We're going into a wave three. This could be our one of three. Um, you know, if these start pulling back a lot deeper, then we reassess, okay, this is still a bearish pattern. Maybe we've gone into a W, X, Y, X, Z, which means there's one more lower low. Um, I don't think there is, though, on a lot of these patterns. So uh, potentially if this is a bullish pattern, we have like achieved pivots, we have um, sort of breached those. So that would look something like they normally go up to about the 786 and then uh, something like that. So let me just move some of this off. Um, that wave three there, if we get to that, is about 1.76. The five is about $2 or just above. They can truncate either of these waves. So this wave can truncate down to a, a 618, a little bit lower. Um, but ideally, um, we need to look at pattern memory, where these charts have gone. And I do know Sand is one that likes a 786 a lot with uh, when we're doing projections. So, um, you know, that's looking at that region up here. So after we've completed. So this is also if we have a look at um, what's kind of happening in this region as well for sand, um, we're kind of trending with that uh, channel as well. We're sitting about the, you know, on the median line of that channel. So it's another pattern that is just about to take off if these regions hold. So we can see that it's, you know, hugging the 100 MA on the daily. So really strong sign that we still have waves to go in a lot of these charts. Okay. How many more charts have you got in you, do you think? <laughs> oh, we've been going, let's do three more. Three more? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, we have all the way ranging from our newest bone uh, to Litecoin, Ocean, Blur. Let's go bone because everyone's giving me a hard time about this because I'm in bone and I've posted that I've, I've added to my position. 
the reason being, so this is a uh, bird eye, so it's a, a dex and it's uh, aggregator, sorry, um, and you can find, you know, lots of different coins, tokens, whatever, and you can trade through uh, Jupiter or uh, a lot of different radium. There was another one too that they do, so I can't think. But if this is like super bearish, if this is still a corrective pattern, this is my pattern. So we're currently um, in a B wave, which is almost complete, coming up for a C wave, which potentially will go to about uh, – two cents, 2.3, three cents, um, and then coming back down for the C wave. So once we kind of hit that region where we're sort of like double topping with that previous B wave, then uh, we're going to see that pullback. Now, if this is a, a still a bullish pattern and, you know, we've got more waves left in this, then uh, this A wave, obviously A waves have five waves. We're coming back down. We've finished, completed that second wave. It hasn't broken the low. We're coming back up for a third wave. It'll just break the previous high, bringing that back, tapping the first wave, and then a continuation. So as long as that fourth wave in that region holds that uh, wave one, this is a valid pattern. So... Um, all eyes are on where we are at the moment for this to what hold the previous out, low. What from here? Hang on, let me have a look. Price range. Uh, about two hundred percent. Whoa. Okay. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of hype in the um, Solana shitcoins at the moment. Um, still seem to be going. Still seem to be providing results. Um, any tips on if people are new to doing that and want to have a go? Yeah, so just, um, you know, if you're really new to doing this and my charts just disappeared um, and you are really new to trading, just do support and resistance regions. You can buy and sell at those regions. Um, Bird Eye is really good because you can place the limit orders uh, through Jupiter and you can just leave those go. Obviously, because it is a DEX, you don't have stop losses or anything like that. So just be aware that you do need to keep checking these trades. Um, they're a lot more high risk than trading on a SEX. Um, so, yeah, essentially, stop losses are not going to help you in this region. Um, BOM is on, I think, Bybit's listed and uh, Binance, and Binance listed as well. So, yeah, yeah. you know, you can get the stop losses in those regions. I do believe that this is more than likely in this uh, this bullish pattern, particularly if we've got that, that wave to come for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, I think that's going to make the, the market quite buoyant and then we're going to see halving. So I think we've got another month. After a little bit of pain this week, once ETFs open up again and they're trading, I think we're going to see less volume on weekends just due to the fact they're not trading and, and that's where our pullbacks are going to occur. So, you know, it's going to make it easier for us as traders to have a little bit of time off on a weekend, which normally doesn't happen. So um, we might change that up coming in the bull run, but yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, a quick shout out on X from HTX Futures. Great work, Lisa. Keep pushing. It's good to, good to be chatting with HTX. Um, right. I, I was going to suggest maybe if we have a look at Ocean um, because I know NVIDIA have got their AI conference this week. Um, and I would think that AI coins are going to be linking up with that and probably having a bit of a run so um yeah if we could take a look well, at Ocean. Cool so another one obviously is singularity that um always kind mm -hmm. of moves very nicely um so a lot of you have seen my video on cross supports we had a cross support which like form beautifully we have another one coming up so that might be a point ignore these that's from a previous signal yes um so we have another uh, cross support coming up which is about 109 
So that's going to be a good region to have um, some orders laddered down to. I think uh, anywhere in this region we can sort of take off. We haven't completed the pattern yet for this, so um, this potentially could be a B wave. It does look like it's a little bit more bullish than uh, what a B wave would be. So this is a low time frame chart, it's 15 minute, just to get those levels. Um, I recommend going up and down through the levels just to see kind of where we're at with patterns. Um, and it does look that uh, the 100 MA has come up and it has broken above that, coming back down at the moment to retest that. Um, again, that cross support region is about 1.1109. So um, that's going to be a potential region. If it does break down again and have, if this is like our A, our B, and we come back down for that C wave, that's about 92. So um, I do think this is potentially like a wave complete. Um, it hasn't been doing huge, huge like corrections just due to the fact that AI coins have been so bullish during this run. So, um, you know, that is going to happen again. So any of these, like if you're looking for long term trades, any of these dips, you need to be DCAing into them because long term, we're going into like the major part of the bull run. And um, within that four year cycle, this is the exciting bit. This is where, you know, potentially this is where the money fortunes are made and lost. Because if you don't take profit, you're going to lose every day. So make sure you are locking that profit as we go with stop losses. Um, if you are, you know, just DCAing and moving those coins off into your own wallets, make sure that you move those on to exchanges or to DEXs in time to sell out on those tops. So we're looking at 2025 for those. Um, potentially, we need to sort of work out what's happening with these ETFs, whether these are major pullbacks, whether they're minor pullbacks. Um, and we'll know more as we get to 2025 and kind of, you know, whether we've got strict regulations coming in, whether the regulations are sort of still similar to what they are now where we, you know, we've been tightening up over the last couple of years while we've been in a bear run. Um, so, you know, they're all factors that need to go into how you're trading, into how you're, you know, sort of, working out what you're doing for the future so um you know if you do have short-term goals by all means you're buying you're selling you're buying you're selling if you've got long-term goals especially if you want to make these tax effective um then you need to work out what the tax rate is going to be so if you're a professional trader you can normally get off depending on how much money you're making obviously but you're you're sort of maybe 20 to 30 percent tax when you're looking at investments, you can be looking up to 50% tax. And I know uh, Indian regions have like the these massive taxes. Um, a lot of you guys tell me that. So it, it's kind of pointless buying and selling if, you know, you're on somewhere that the government knows that they can get that money. Um, so just be cautious with how that works, because that is something that is in focus at the moment. You know, a lot of governments are saying, hey, I'm going to take that that profit from you because that's ours and we know we can get it now. Um, so, yeah. So for Ocean, short, like to cut that short, I think we're still going up um, as long as we hold these, these regions here. Uh, it is looking good. So I'm going to just throw some um, – fibs on that just to have a look as to where we actually are in this pattern uh, and see what how many waves we've got so it does look like uh, we haven't hit fib levels on this so potentially um, the next level up is 1.52 and then we're looking at 1.76 um, overall looking at the the larger pattern on ocean if we're looking at projection so I'm going to go up to a daily excuse my messy chart let me just take that off 
um, you can see we had that cup here. That's essentially what we're seeing like on a lot of charts at the moment, um, that cup coming back down for that handle and then taking off. So, um, you know, if we if look at projections for uh, where charts are going, this is, let me take all of those off. Um, looking good. So it's hit the 6.5, so the golden zone, 6.18 to 6.5 is our golden zone. So it's hit that. It's coming back down. So this, to me, when I'm looking at this chart, that uh, golden zone when we've got a wave one at the 2.36, the way I do the wave projection. So this is a wave four potentially, and um, then we're going up. So that'll either go to the 786 or the 0.9. So because it is such a bullish chart, more than likely it'll go to the 0.9 fib, which is about 183, um, and then a continuation up once we've hit that to our third wave coming back down. Um, so, yeah, it, it still has room to move. We might sit in this correction for about a week, though, so just be aware, there may not be like these fast movements that we have seen. Um, fourth waves are the slowest and the most annoying waves because there's so many different patterns that they can be. Um, I think there's about 30 or 40 different patterns depending on what happens, like uh, if it meets certain pivots or whatever. And that's what I was saying with BTC earlier. If you want to go back when this is finished and rewatch this, um, BTC is potentially you know, in a critical region where it could go either way. Okay, right. Let's squeeze in a couple more and then we will wrap it up for the week. Um, there was T Fuel, uh, Fetter, I believe that is. Is that right? T Fuel. Oh, no, uh, T Fuel is a different one. That's right. T Fuel, yeah. Um, so T Fuel is for Fetter, but let's see. Um, I'm going to go again up to a daily and get some um, projections on these. Uh, we can see that we're quite toppy on a lot of the indicators on a lot of these charts. Now, depending on where we are, so if we go back down, we can see that this wasn't our bottom. This potentially was our bottom. So that makes this a wave one, a wave two and potentially we're in a three. So if we're looking at that um, and we have some sort of like awareness as to where this pattern is going. So these, you need to be aware that a lot of these patterns, because they don't have a fifth wave, they can be corrective. So for T fuel, if it's in a bearish pattern, it's gonna break down below 64. So 0, 0.64, so 6 cents. So uh, that's our bearish potential, and that's going to retest those lows. So that's, you know, if we start breaking down massively with Bitcoin, I don't think that's happening at the moment. I don't think we're quite there yet. But if we start breaking down with those coins, these alts are going to fail these patterns, and then that becomes an A, a B, and a C. So we don't want that to happen. We want this to be an impulse. Um, at the moment, this, our break point for T Fuel, our pivot, that makes this either a bullish or a bearish chart. We're still underneath that, and this is still a bearish chart. It has had quite a strong rejection from that region. Um, so we want this to consolidate here and then continue up. So if we do get some consolidation in this region, potentially we can get to about, um, you know, 14 cents, 15 cents here. So, um, but it does need to hold those, that region that I said, the 6064. Uh, so holding that region means this is potentially a, a bullish pattern. And then by breaking that, uh, this pattern here at the, uh, 11 so 11 cents around 11 cents is what we want to break on t fuel once that has been breached this is a bullish pattern so and um yeah we're going to see those higher highs right. for this wave so whether we long term we can get up there but at the moment 
we've got an immediate pivot on this wave here and then the next pivot up is 25 cents okay cool um very very quickly i'm not sure you'll have a chart for this one uh, a request off youtube for olas o l a s now, I'm only mentioning it. In fact, I'll pop the comment up here so everyone can see. It's an AI play. Um, it's on Uniswap um, and BitGet and CoinEx, but very new. So um, are see you able oh, to see if you can actually find it? No. Let's see if it's even on Trade. You make a copy. And then... Um, all the other requests, thank you for sharing them. Uh, if you're in GSIC, getting started in crypto, and we haven't got around to your request, really sorry, but you can put it in the live chat, and we will be there um, in a bit to carry on charting for you. Um, otherwise, I've got a couple more general questions, and then we are good to wrap up. Yeah, so Olas, um, I'm just going to put RSI. Where are, where's my stock? There we go. Um, we can see in the, if we're trading uh, by the stock indicator, we would be selling it at this point and potentially we've got one wave down. It is, uh, this is a four hour chart. So I'm gonna move this up. Like we don't have a lot of data on this chart yet. So um, as you can see on the daily, so the, the stock RSI has literally zero data. So it's dropped in, it's come down. This is a, what we call a bullish cross So on the stock. So it's really low, it's crossed over. It can sort of twist and turn in that region. It can sort of, you know, um, sort of sit sideways for a little bit. But it does look like this is a bullish chart. So if we're, you know, sort of sitting here and going, okay, where is this going? What is happening with it? Um, if we look at the very, very little data that we have on these new coins, um, I'd say, you know, depending on, we need to assess where this starts sort of moving. Um, we've got a resistance sitting at about 7.4. We've got sort of like, if we count these waves, Potentially, we could be going up if we count this sort of as a second wave, maybe. Um, and this was our, our first wave. So if we chop back down to that four hour and have a look how many wave counts we've got, it's kind of hard to see how that is. Maybe it's got more data on one of the DEXs. If it does, um, I can put that on Twitter for you um, or X for you. And um, I'll have a look. But at the moment, immediate resistance on the four hour chart on the 100 MA that's come in and um, is sort of causing a bit of chaos there. Does look like it's going to definitely reach that 72. Whether it can break out or not is another story. It's sitting very high on the four hour. So I'm going to drop it right down. So this is how I assess new coins and whether I'm entering them or whether I'm not um to see where we're going so when we drop this down to the 15 minute we can see that we're going to be moving a little bit sideways um so it is a really choppy indicator at the moment so it's not giving me a lot of information there's a lot of buying and selling happening in this coin and that's what's causing that sort of you know indicator to be really choppy so we're not getting the data that we need. We are seeing that the 100 and the 200 is acting like support and resistance. That's a really good sign that this coin has strength. So um, we want that to continue. Um, like I've explained in the other charts, if it's coming back down to retest and it's coming back down and it, it holds those regions and it takes off, it's like that's a really strong indicator of strength in a coin. So you want that to be happening um yeah so we can see on that so i'm just going to pop that to an hourly chart and see you know immediately all i can see is uh we're kind of still stuck in those resistance regions we do need to break out on that seven four if we can break out then yeah potentially that's going to be um that that would be our pole and then we would look at that being 
the height of uh, that breakout zone. So, you know, you might get to about 15 on this, so uh, which is about three times, I think, at the moment. So um, let me grab price from here, potentially 167, 170%. Okay, cool. And with the as long as it meets the criteria on that, on what I was saying. Absolutely. And with the AI narrative, it could do well this week. So um, good luck on that one. Um, okay, so let's wrap it up just with a very quick general thoughts on uh, Charlie was looking for some general thoughts on the main meme coins. Obviously, Solana meme coins have been taken off, but for Doge and Ship, um, and what do you, how do you think they're going to fare in the coming uh, bull run? Well, I think, you know, there's there's easy money to be made there. So, um, you know, a lot of the Asian nations love trading those coins. So I think, yeah, we're going to continue to make that easy money. At the moment, we're seeing, we have seen sort of, you know, 600 to 1,000% profits on those. So that's just crazy. And we've seen that go down the line. We've seen, um, you know, Pooh Bear. We've seen, um, like, Doge, obviously. We've seen uh, Bonk go crazy. Just a lot of these meme coins are absolutely crazy. So they are something that you do need to hold um, within your portfolio, in my opinion, just to keep that balance because, they, you know, when you're looking at breaking down your portfolio, um, you know, you want to have some AI, you want to have some of the majors, you want to have some like frivolous coins like your meme coins because they are going to make money. It's like regardless of what, you know, these, be oh, I can't touch that because um, it's a meme coin. That's below me. I'm, I'm a bit Bitcoin maxi or whatever. Um, these, this is where the money is in this market before all these major regulations come in. You want to be trading this stuff. So, and what I mean not hodling, trading this stuff. So, you know, the, the odd few people sort of, you hear these stories on, on X and on YouTube and, and that sort of thing, that somebody bought in on the seed round and, you know, they've become an overnight millionaire. That's rare. That's really rare. So, you know, but if you're structuring a portfolio, you're going to do really well at the moment. And I would say don't believe every screenshot you see on X and YouTube as well. Um, it is very are. easy <laughs> to Photoshop them and to try and lure people in. So, um, yeah, keep your wits about you. And I think you hit the nail on the head um, when you're talking about diversity if you are a hodler and DCAing and not to knock uh, meme coins because where the uh, true in it for the tech coins might be doing poorly, the meme coins could be making up and vice versa. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And that gives you like a balance. So where something's always moving and uh, you're not feeling like you're missing out. So FOMO mm -hmm. is going to be a big issue coming into the bull market, um, get that under control by, you know, structuring how you're trading, not having everything in one coin, making sure that, you know, particularly, you know, for those that have been through the market and this isn't your first time, you, you've seen like, you know, the major crashes that have brought down everything. Um, you want to be diversified on across depths, across sexes, not just one. So, you know, not have, because if an FTX happens again, you're going to lose all your funds or it's going to be tied up until it goes through all the red tape. So you want to be across several exchanges um, you want to be across a couple of DEXs. You want to have your money not all in one wallet that, you know, when if you do click on the wrong link, you're not getting that sort of just all drained. So make sure you're being super cautious in these markets. Um, make sure you're diversifying your coins so a Luna type thing or a FTT type thing doesn't happen where, you know, it just that's the only money that you have and it just goes completely down um we don't want to we want to see you making money we want to see everyone making money and and not losing it and most importantly 
don't over leverage in these regions where we don't have confirmations on a lot of these coins and they could be still corrective because if they are still corrective and Bitcoin does really dump and this is the major correction of the market, it's not confirmed that that's happening yet. So don't, you know, take that and go, oh, my God, I need to sell. You don't need to sell until um, it meets criteria that, you know, it's a taxable event for you or you just are moving to the next coin. So um, for me, for my long-term bags, literally, I'm just continuing to dollar cost average as uh, we go until we do get into the, the major part of the bull run. And that red tape you mentioned can take years and years as an original Mount Goxer. Uh, yes, well there's, like, there's no money. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe one day with a bit of luck, um, you will get all your Bitcoin back. But until yeah. then, yeah, until then we move. Uh, thanks for everyone for joining. We're well over 760 people tuned in. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy, it's isn't it? The, I mean, the bull run is back. So we were getting sort of like 15,000 15, views like during the bull run. It's dropped down to about 300, which is like, ouch, you guys hate me over the bear, bear yeah. cycle. But we're moving back into the bull run. You're all back and, um, you know, happy trading and make sure you got questions. I'm there on X and I'm more than happy to, to answer and help you out. Absolutely. And if you are on X and not in getting started in crypto.com, then you really need yeah, to. Why, why aren't you in getting started in crypto.com? Why, why don't you have the Lisa bot where I get we, to trade yeah. for you? Yeah, we have a lot of fun there. So do try it out. And um, here's a little secret if you go to the paid signals page and um, pretend to leave the page, a little <laughs> pop up will will pop up and give you a trial for a discount but you're not meant to know that so um so yeah just in case there's anyone who wants to dip their toes in but not sure if it's right for you that's also absolutely fine we get it so um just come and try us for a week and see what you think anything else from you Liz, or are we good to rock it. on so you know oh. I, I think we've got some exciting times ahead of us it might be a little bit slow and red this week but Hey, that's part of trading. That's part of trading. Have a good week, everyone, and we will see you very, very soon.